I generated some stuff and then slapped it underneath some footage. If it's just a matter of too bad, so sad, sucks to be you. I'm gonna give you a lawyer's reaction to AI copyright claimed my last video. Like the implications are huge and at the end of the day, real creators are gonna lose. Buckle in because this is pretty bad. Welcome back, I'm Top Music Attorney, and I am just committed to helping you guys through this evolution of music AI, how to protect yourself. Do you own the copyright in the AI music that you create? How could this backfire on you and your music career by using AI? Well, today I'm gonna give you a lawyer's reaction to AI copyright claimed my last video. I'm gonna give you guys my thoughts on how to navigate what is happening right now with AI and copyright. So without further ado, let's jump into it. I have a question for you. If you created a song using AI, who owns the copyright to that song? Is it you? Is it the AI platform that you made it on? Is it nobody? Or is it the creator of the data that that AI was trained on? Well, whatever answer you think you have, you're probably wrong. <laughs> and I'm starting to get pretty worried that that's about to become a really big problem. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. If you are a musician or a YouTuber or an artist or a content creator of any kind, this is about to become a really damn important question because this could be the thing that kickstarts the next great copyright claiming grift, not only here on YouTube, but across, I mean, basically every platform on the internet. And the implications of this are absolutely astounding. After all the work and research and emails and testing and everything that went into the production of this video, I'm not normally one to sit here ringing the alarm bells and doing the oh my god red arrow click face thing, but I think we might be kind of fucked. Oh and to prove it to you, I'm going to show you how I started copyright claiming myself using AI generated content for only about $30 in a couple of minutes in clear violation of almost all the rules of all of these platforms with zero consequences. Uh -oh. So buckle in because this is pretty bad. Okay, context for these different music AI platforms. We've done a deep dive into the terms of service, which is the contract that you sign when you use these platforms and you generate AI music. Do you own the music? Do you own the copyright? I'll answer those questions as we go through this video, but I'm very interested on his take. Going by the analytics here, as around 40,000 of you will remember, and as around 600,000 of you may have seen, a little while ago I posted a video where I tier listed all of the equipment here in my home studio. And then a couple of weeks later, mysteriously, that video went offline. And this video, I at like its core, lighting. is about why that happened. But more importantly, it's about the absolutely maddening rabbit hole that all of this sent me down. In that video, I decided to use some stock background music, which normally I don't do because I write all the music for my videos, but this one was a little bit different and it was really long and it was just kind of for fun. While I was editing the video, I went onto a royalty-free music website and grabbed some different tracks, and I happened to find one that was AI generated. It was noted that it was royalty-free, the creator even said so in the description, and I used it. I uploaded the video, and a few weeks later, wouldn't you know it, I got a copyright claim on their behalf, and that's actually a pretty big deal. If you're a content creator or a musician, you're probably already familiar with the absolute hellscape that is YouTube's content ID system. I mean, this isn't even my first rodeo with it. I've produced several videos about why it's an absolute nightmare, like when I almost got a strike for using a clip of a fight at a Waffle House, or my video about why musicians who use samples or loops, even though they're royalty-free in their music, might be liable for copyright claims against the music they created with those samples. We've talked about splice samples and, you know, it's probably because even Splice themselves, I've spoken with their legal department, and they say they register all their sounds with Content ID. And as you producers know, when you use licensed samples from third parties, well, that usually means that other people are also using those licensed samples. Sometimes they are beats, right? And so in any case, you will have claims. And so then the first person puts the claim on the song. They're like, this is mine, when really they've just licensed something in it. And then everyone else who comes thereafter is gonna get, sometimes, a claim of copyright infringement. Why should you care about this in particular? 
Well, if you are a smaller YouTuber who maybe just recently got monetized, or maybe you're a career YouTuber who has an external editor who handles the music in your videos, or maybe you run a very large channel and edit all your videos yourself, or whatever, if you use music in the background of your videos and it happens to be AI generated, or you use AI music specifically because you assume it's safe for copyright claims, YouTube might have just made one of the most impactful and terrible decisions when it comes to copyright and music on this platform. And even though none of it is really legally enforceable, there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. If you're not familiar, when a copyright claim is filed on your video on YouTube, the monetization from that video is held in an escrow account. This means that nobody gets the money until this claim is resolved. In the case that you win, you're all good and you get the money. If you lose, though, the money for that video now goes to whoever made the claim. You could dispute this, but there can be massive consequences if you lose that dispute. You might get a copyright strike, or maybe even lose your channel altogether. Yeah, and I, I can tell you as a practitioner, I do this from not only my own YouTube channels, but you know, for my clients as well. When you receive, it's a DMCA takedown, and so you receive, pursuant to the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, you get a DMCA takedown. So it means someone has filed a copyright claim and saying something in your video belongs to me, right? Maybe it's my song, maybe it's a clip that I own, right, it's a video clip. And so they say, well, you don't have permission to use this copyrighted content. And then you have the opportunity to file a counter notification, so basically to appeal it. And so YouTube is very clear and warns you. And it's like, look, if you wanna go through our normal process, we can hold this for up to 30 days, which is a nightmare for content creators, or you can go on this expedited track. And if you go on the expedited track, they warn you. They say, well, if you do this and you lose the process, then you're gonna get a strike on your channel. So it's pretty, it's pretty aggressive. Long story short, Content ID is a fingerprinting system from Google that detects copyrighted content from the internet in its database. Using a variety of different services, you or anyone else could upload content to this database to have it tracked across different platforms so that if and when your copyrighted content is used without your permission, you are notified and in some cases compensated. At its core, Content ID was designed as a good thing. It's there to protect your copyrighted works, and it's an extraordinarily powerful tool for copyright protection. The problem is, it can be pretty easily abused. So why does this matter exactly? There are no shortage of distribution services out there that someone could use to distribute AI-generated music and get it added to Google's Content ID database, so that anyone who uses it or uses something that sounds enough like it to trigger the Content ID system to flag it ends up getting to have their copyright claim filed, and if someone disputes it, it comes back to you to decide, nope, too bad, and away you go. Now, in fairness, most of these music distribution platforms will have some sort of safeguard that says, hey, before you upload this, you need to check this box that says it wasn't AI generated, or you need to check this box that says it doesn't use any commercial loops or samples that might trip other people's songs up because that's not fair and yada, yada, yada. I can tell you that I have relationships with music distributors and the distributors have shared that, you know, a lot of them have different tech that they use to screen music because, you know, they're in some instances dealing with tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of artists and labels. And so they have an obligation to screen that music so they know what's AI, they wanna know if anything is sampled, they wanna know if there are cover songs, and so they can integrate with Content ID through the Google database. Not everyone does this, okay, but it's, it's, it is something that distributors can and should be doing. There's literally nothing preventing you from just clicking the right boxes and uploading it anyway, even though it's a clear violation of that platform's terms of service. Okay. So that's exactly what I did. <laughs> what platform did you use? Who's, who's, Before who's we get any further in into the here. weeds, though, we should probably take a quick refresher here on how copyright works when it comes to music. Because okay. even if you're just a human making human music for other humans and you have no interest in AI whatsoever, these same things that protect your copyrights as a person are the same things that make AI music such a nightmare and could even affect your music even if you've never used or have any interest in AI whatsoever. But we're gonna get into all that in a minute. Music copyright works on just a couple basic cornerstones. After you've written a piece of music, you own the copyright to it, and this is protected and determined by just a few key factors, like the melody, 
the lyrics, if there are any, the distinctive structure and voice leadings, and other defining characteristics that identify that specific song against another one. AKA, under US copyright law, as soon as you take your creative idea and you put it into a tangible medium, okay? You fix your thought into a tangible thing, like a MP3, like a voice note on your phone, like your handwritten lyrics. As soon as you've actually taken the idea out of your head and you've put it into a tangible medium pursuant to US copyright law, you have copyright protection. That's great, right? Roughly speaking, the two key factors that determine a copyright dispute are substantial similarity, or if the average person would say the two songs are the same, and the idea of access, or if the person infringing on the rights of one song could have reasonably had access to hear the original and then copy it in some way. Determining the outcome of one of these disputes really falls down to argument much of the time, and that's really the source of all of the, did artist A really just steal artist B's song videos? and lawsuits and all that that we've seen about a billion times over by now. Two, two of the things that he noted, he goes, well, if we're looking at this on whether there's been copyright violation, one, was there access? Thousand percent, that's true, okay? So um, part of the analysis is, could this person have reasonably come into contact with your song, right? So maybe even if it wasn't intentional, that they were influenced by it, right? So we saw this with the Marvin Gaye, Robin Thicke, Blurred Lines litigation. And, you know, it wasn't so good for Pharrell Williams and Robin Thicke where, you know, there's an interview that came out where Pharrell Williams was talking about how he had been inspired by one of Marvin Gaye's songs, which was alleged to have then been, you know, infringed upon later on. So the access piece, 100%. And then he had mentioned, would a reasonable person think that, you know, essentially, these are the same songs, would there be consumer confusion about it? And that's close, but let's keep going. I guess, let me put it this way, as a copyright litigation attorney, there's more that goes into it, but the, these are definitely points of the analysis. All this raises the ultimate question here. Does AI-generated music or content really have any sort of claim to copyright? And the answer is no. Kinda. Sorta. <laughs> Maybe. Back in 2023, the US Copyright Office set out a few rulings for how copyright and AI-generated content works. Broadly speaking, AI-generated content has no ability to claim copyright protection and is not protected in any real way. However, they did say that if there is sufficient human authorship involved, then that work may be eligible for copyright protection. This raises the all too important question, what exactly is sufficient human authorship? And the answer to that is, nobody really knows because this has never been challenged or taken to court where any precedent has been set. And at least at the time of making this video, this means that we are still in the wild west hellscape of AI generated content and its copyright protection eligibility. And it's gonna get a whole lot worse before it gets any better. This is true. It is going to get very much more complicated, but just to, you know, so the Copyright Act says that for there to be copyright protection, we need the creative idea fixed into a tangible medium related to original works of authorship. And that authorship is presumed to be by humans. So basically the Copyright Office put out the statement and the Copyright Office said basically AI by itself cannot be copyrighted. It's not made by a human, right? So the Copyright Office says, well, if you're gonna file something for copyright, if it's all copyright, you can't file it, right? If what you've created, such as a song, has an element of AI in it, what you have to do is disclaim. You have to tell the Copyright Office, hey, the instrumental was made by Udio, right? So the instrumental was created by AI. I am not claiming ownership of copyright in that AI portion, but the sufficient authorship what else did you actually make? Did you make the lyrics? Did you make the melodies? Did you sing on top of the instrumental? Those are things you absolutely would have copyright protection in. In fact, just a couple weeks ago, I was offered a pretty significant amount of money to promote some other AI platform that claims it's offering a robust set of monetization tools for AI creators, specifically so that they can start grifting money off the internet with all this AI music slop garbage.
The core of the problem here starts to emerge when you think about not just how AI music is generated, but also how copyright works with music in general, as we discussed earlier. These AI models are trained on databases of music, but almost none of them have clearly stated where exactly these databases were sourced from. In one rare and particularly troubling insight, Back in August of 2024, the co-founder of Suno admitted that their models are trained on music they sourced from the open internet. The open internet, as you can probably guess, is just the internet at large, and this means that any music out there on the surface web was considered fair game by any platform that trained on it. Yeah, and also for the record, where the music AI company, so Suno, Udio, where they start is that they clammed up. And so the major record labels were like, where'd you get your stuff from that you trained your AI on? Because we are finding that you're spitting out music that replicates, better yet, imitates our music. We think you took our music. And the music AI platforms would not acknowledge and they're like, we're not telling you. And then they got sued. <laughs> so then the major labels sued both of these companies for hundreds of millions of dollars in statutory damages. And then when the music AI companies answered, so they filed their answers, they go, you know what? Yeah, we did. <laughs> we absolutely used music that's on the internet. I'm like, what, what are you saying? Like you went to Spotify, right? And downloaded copies of the music. And they go, yeah, we did it, but it's fair use. So we'll, we'll talk about that more here in a sec. This is also why the RIAA opened up legal complaints That's against right. several major AI music platforms, claiming that the platform- Yeah, so they were part of the record label lawsuits. Platforms were trained on the music of artists without their consent. The argument here largely falls down to a thought experiment in the world of AI content creation, commonly referred to as the Chinese room experiment. To put it very simply, if you put a person in a room where they saw some Chinese symbols and all they had were some rules and a data set to reference to create a response that is accurate and makes sense, they could then output some kind of response based on the input. On the outside, it would appear that whoever is in the box clearly speaks fluent Chinese, when in reality, they're just referencing some rules that they have to formulate a response without any idea what that response actually means or implies. This is probably an easy way to see why AI-generated music is a real problem, especially when it generates something that's similar enough to an existing artist's work, and really why it's a problem that it exists altogether. And just for context, going back to, again, this is what I do for a living. We sue if there's a song that you own and someone else comes along. And they're like, you know what? I want to do a song just like your song. And so they rip off a good portion of what you do. And we're not even saying they sample. We're not even saying that they took an actual part of your song, but they then created something new they mimicked. And they did it so much, right? It might as well have just been your song, but it is a new song, right? And so taking that same argument where we're like, no, clearly there's copyright infringement. You should have been paid because normally you get paid a licensing fee for someone to come and be like, hey, I want to redo your song and make my own version, right? So this is what's called interpolation. I am interpolating your song into my new version. It's not a cover song, it's something new, AKA a derivative work. So we go, this is the state of the law. This is how these copyright complaints arise. So now we're going into the age of music AI. And so for example, back to the situation where if we have music AI platforms that then take songs, right? That are on Spotify, they train the AI to then be able to spit out new versions, right? That are mimicking the original versions. And so the big argument here is like, well, is this copyright infringement or is it fair use? And if it's fair use, that's an exception to copyright. So to oversimplify it, so under 17 USC section 107, there are four elements of, of how things can be qualified as fair use. Basically it's a legal use of someone's song illegally. <laughs> so meaning, you know, you could incorporate someone else's song into what you're doing without being liable for copyright infringement. And typically when we're considering, you know, fair use, we look at, well, was the use for education? Was it for commentary, right? Was it newsworthy? Was it parody? So there's kind of exceptions to the rule, but what the major record labels are saying, they're like, no, 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 this is not fair use. This is straight up copyright infringement. If you are someone that is needing help in the music business, at the end of this video, you can check out topmusicattorney.com. I have courses, I have free stuff, just to kind of get you started. If you do want to deep dive, if you do want to train with me, I always say go through my music business program, which is how to think like a record label, become a record label. And then if you do want to get into touch with me or one of my lawyers, we got you covered. Because AI generated music has melted 
melody, lyrics, and voice leading, and the other general defining characteristics that we classify as a piece of music, technically, it meets all the same requirements that human-created music does to qualify for copyright protection. Now this in itself could be a whole video deep dive rabbit hole, so we're just gonna kinda have to move on here for the sake of time, but hopefully that makes sense as to why AI causes so many problems for copyright and music. Because whatever it creates, in theory, all it would take is someone to then upload that to a service like Content ID to cause a whole lot of headaches and problems yep. for the rest of us. That's right. All good points. I stole my own music with AI. To test all this out, I ended up going on Suno and asked it to create some music that sounds like me. And of course, there are now protections against asking it to imitate certain artists, but by engineering the prompt a little bit and with a little bit of trial and error, I was actually able to get pretty damn close to my own tracks. This is something that a lot of artists and labels are upset at, especially when you see that there are entire websites or forums dedicated to prompts that you can use to emulate a specific artist's sound. You may have seen this cropping up on different streaming services where people have used AI to imitate a specific artist's style and then released tracks or albums under that artist's name trying to get some money out of it. One streaming platform, Audius, even touts this as a feature and actively encourages artists to allow people to rip off their music. Oh, wow. Now, in fairness, and I guess in the interest of playing devil's advocate a little bit here, you can say that all music can be broken down and classified with things like genre and instrumentation and arrangement and whatnot. This isn't that big of a deal. However, when you consider that musically speaking, all it takes to cause a problem here is for one thing to sound enough like another thing. And in this case, it's an AI generated thing versus a human thing, but the AI generated thing was told to generate something that specifically sounds like this specific human. Right. If that human makes more music or uses a melody that sounds similar to the AI thing, and the creator of that AI thing uploaded that result to a service that has it to content ID, that's gonna start causing a lot of headaches for everybody. Before these big lawsuits were filed by the major record labels, we had just talked about on this channel how there were music distributors who were reporting that Content ID was catching AI-created music and being like, oh, we think that this came from this human-made song. And so there was kind of just this, this suspicion of like, hmm, well, we don't know where these music AI platforms are getting the music from at that time. <laughs> But we go, we can speculate that, well, maybe it's getting it from prior existing music, number one, because that's also how you train, right? AI in general is that you give it something to train on. But the other piece is that there was um, all kinds of YouTube content creator and even our friend over at Sync My Music who just kind of caught on to this and they would put in prompts and be able to have the music AI spit out songs that were almost exactly other people's songs, right? So things like the chord progression, things even like the performance of the artist. It was pretty crazy some of the stuff that I saw. This all becomes even more of a nightmare when you understand that some services also offer ways to upload a clip of audio to base a result on. This in particular creates a really unique problem for musicians and labels and anyone running a music catalog going forward because when you take into account something like licensing, let's say, where someone wants to use your song in a TV show or a video game or a movie trailer or something, and they decide for some reason that they don't want to license it from you because they can't afford it or they don't want to or whatever, all they would need to do is take a clip of your song and upload it to one of these AI services that features a reference audio input function and then generate something based on that that's legally different enough maybe to circumvent the need to license it from you. As an example of this, check out these two clips. I uploaded a clip of one of my original songs and then used the AI reference audio function to generate something different. Sounds good to now me. Now that. Ugh. 
Well, and here's the other thing, right? Looking at the terms of service for these platforms, what they say, and this was Suno, right? So when we looked through Suno's contract, it specifically says if you upload any or anything that you put into the Suno database, so lyrics, your own music, right? So your sound, so, you know, an MP3, that you are giving an irrevocable license to the platform to not only use it, but that it can train its AI on your music. And it even says that your stuff may end up in other people's outputs as well. So, you know, even for me as a creator, I'm like, oh my gosh, that makes me really nervous to ever put anything of mine into one of these systems, understanding that it could literally be populated into someone else's song. Really sucks because I guess you could say that's different enough to not technically be the same thing, and that would mean whoever uses that is free and clear to do so. And, in theory, if they released the soundtrack for whatever that went into and decided to copyright it, I could be infringing on their copyrights, maybe yeah. to some degree. Yeah. Or if I write more music in the future, I could be infringing on my own copyright of their maybe copyright because I wrote music that sounded too much like me. And unfortunately, there are no real protections against this either. Even though platforms like Su Well, look, one of the protections is that for your original song, this is why we do copyright registrations. Remember earlier I go, you have automatic copyright pursuant to the Copyright Act. Yay, great. But you don't have a copyright registration with the federal government. You have to do that yourself. And the reason that you do that is because it's what us lawyers refer to as prima facie evidence of your ownership. Because you're like, I own this and it happened earlier in time. Have hey, a piece of paper that I filed with the federal government. As of right now, the filing fee for a song that's already out is $65. If you have not published it, right, put it on Spotify. It's $85 for a registration. That registration can be your entire album, right? So you pay just the one fee. But but the point is that no, this, this absolutely is important that you're documenting the timing of your creations, but also when you register for federal copyright, you get additional benefits that you do not get if you don't register. Statutory damages, you can seek reimbursement of your attorney's fees, and also you can sue someone in a court of law. Uno will claim that tracks that are using copyrighted works or have vocals detected are stuck as being private or cannot otherwise be downloaded, you could simply record the output of a free tool like OBS and then use it and be on your merry way. As a reasonable human being, you would probably hope and pray that siphoning money off of creators using AI-generated content and copyright claiming them would be way more work than it's really worth. but. The truth is, it's actually really easy, and it's not even that expensive to get started. So I did it to myself, and it took me less than 20 minutes. I went onto an AI music creator, I generated some stuff with a free account, I downloaded the track, and then slapped it underneath some footage of me talking, and then uploaded that to my alternate YouTube account. Then I created an account with a music distribution service. I uploaded that AI-generated track and paid the fee for content ID. All said and done, this took me about 15 minutes and cost me roughly $30. And wouldn't you know it, a little while later, I got a notification that my video was copyright claimed by me for using my AI generated track. Now you might be sitting there pretty f***ing horrified thinking, why is there no enforcement for any of this? And the unfortunate truth is, there kinda can't be. With the service I used to upload the music, even though I was in clear violation of their policies for submitting this to Content ID, all I had to do was just check the right boxes and it was uploaded and submitted with no questions asked. On YouTube's end, after disputing the claim on my own video that prompted this whole video, YouTube's response was simply that they're just not in a position to determine or enforce any of this, and it's just a matter of too bad, so sad, Better luck next time, sucks to be you. We're talking about a private company and a private company that does what it does to make money. <laughs> Where we recently talked about this is, well, what about government regulation? Like, is it getting that serious with AI? And some, of course, would say absolutely yes. And so we did a whole discussion on this on the channel in regards to the Trump administration. And big, what is the impact of the Trump administration gonna have on the music business? For example, we covered a Forbes article, which is kind of speculated on, well, the Trump administration is likely going to be pro-technology, 
pro AI and so to soften regulations for these companies, right? So that they can grow and expand and do lots of good business. But the impact of that may be devastating on what's already a struggling music business. And it's because of these things of not just like, what are you training your AI on? But what about data protection? What about privacy for the people who are using these AI platforms? So anyway, that was a pretty interesting conversation, but specifically in what he's like, well, right now, who's gonna regulate this? Well, should it be the government? What do you think? Drop a comment down below. This means that the only real way for me to take this any further to resolve the dispute would be to go out, hire lawyers, take all of this to court for what would inevitably be a very sure. long and pointless and expensive legal battle just to prove the point to YouTube that this was AI generated and shouldn't be eligible for copyright protection through systems like Content ID. Ultimately, yeah. this means that there's no real protection and no real enforcement. So if I decided to sit down and make a bunch of AI generated music slop and upload that to a bunch of free background music for YouTube video websites that are popular, and then I decided to start claiming people through content ID, well, they're fucked. <laughs> it probably goes without saying that the implications of this and how far reaching they are is extremely troubling, to put it lightly. A big tech nightmare. If you're a musician, in theory, if your music you wrote sounds too similar to a track that someone else made with AI and then they decided to add their track to Content ID, you could get claimed. If someone likes your music, but they can't afford what you're asking to license it, or just don't want to bother asking to license it, they could just rip it off using the audio input functions of some of the more popular platforms. And if the results sounded similar enough, who knows? Maybe now you're infringing on their copyrighted works because the next song you wrote sounded too much like you. If you're a content creator, if you use any AI generated music in your videos, all it would take is for the creator of that AI track to add it to Content ID. And now you are magically violating their copyrighted work. If you don't use any AI music, but you use music that sounds close to something that someone generated with AI, they could probably claim that as well, and you'll likely lose, because YouTube, a literal multi-billion dollar corporation, has absolutely no way to enforce or determine the rights to anything, and, well, it just sucks to be you. One, well, normally they don't. That's an important piece here. Most of the time, YouTube, social media, music distributors, music platforms, when there is a claim of copyright infringement, typically they go, you know what, we don't want to get involved, so you go figure it out with the claimant. If you happen to be dealing with someone who is filing false claims, it's it's quite the nightmare. And I do get hired all the time to do stuff like this. You know, and I just kind of go back to the whole, well, if we have government regulation coming, because that's what's needed. And just this general idea of, of what's going on right now with AI is that there is an atrophy of licensing. So generally, if we don't have to license music to train the AI, well, that means that songwriters, that creators are now losing a significant amount of money. There were some performance rights organizations that did this study and they estimated there's gonna be something lost like in the billions of dollars. But then also on the flip side of this, we're like, well, what about copyright? Is copyright just gonna totally go away? Whether it's a result of, let's say the Trump administration or we have case precedents because one of these cases is like, you know what? It is fair use. The AI can go ahead and train on whatever it wants and you don't have to pay any licenses. Like the implications are huge. And at the end of the day, real creators are gonna lose. Tech companies are gonna win. More money for them. This is all a giant nightmare. And you might be asking, what can we do about any of this? And what the unfortunate answer is not a whole lot. No. Until we modernize <laughs> copyright laws and some of these cases of AI generated content, copyright claims and such are taken to court and precedents are set to establish new laws to keep up with the pace of technology, we're kind of doomed. And unfortunately, oh the reality of that is even if one country decides a certain thing, international laws could vary and you still could be just as liable somewhere else as you are where you are now. Even if you're a creator who's not using AI generated music in your videos, or you're a musician who's not using any kind of AI to create your music, you're still just as liable to respect the apparent magical copyrights of anyone who craps out a bunch of AI garbage and decides to hit the magical content ID button. The frustrating and short truth of it all here is that it's probably gonna take a while before any of this gets resolved. And 
it's probably ultimately just going to be resolved in favor of whoever has the most money to throw at the problem. Mm -hmm. You know, he makes some real good points. And a and couple highlight things. One, I love his lighting. I meant to say that a bunch of times throughout the video. Really nice video. We'll, we'll go back to the, the last piece of what he has to say. But anyway, there is no legal copyright in AI. So meaning there is no copyright protection in AI itself. And what you get from these platforms is typically a license. And they're like, hey, you use our platform. And usually as long as you're, you have a paid subscription, you own what you create or you have a license to use it. So make sure you read the terms of service because some of you are using these platforms on the free tier and the rules are different on the free tier. But either way, you don't get to register a copyright for AI, but you do own the, the original stuff that you made, your lyrics, your melodies, your instrumental, whatever portion you actually made. And really what we're talking about here is that this is a massive content ID problem, right? So I don't even necessarily think that it's an issue with copyright law as of right now. It's that because of this glitch, and I'm sure these platforms are scrambling to try to figure this out, that we just have mass fraudulent reporting of copyright infringement when really it's because something is AI and it is a derivative. It was created from someone else's real human made song. And so as one little nugget, I'll just say, this is why it's so important to copyright your music with the federal government. Go to copyright.gov, okay? and it's something you absolutely can do for yourself. I mean, to his point, this is really gonna suck for those of us who have to go through this, but whatever the scenario is that someone was fraudulently using or claiming your music, you don't just lie down and take it. There absolutely are ways to fight this. And that's why I do these videos um, here on Top Music Attorney. Oh, man. I guess I should uh, maybe apologize here if this video ends on what feels like a little <laughs> oh, bit of no. a bummer, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I wish there was a brighter, chipper ending I could slap onto all this with there something is. I could say or advice I would give or some action we could take to prevent all of this or help with all of this, but at least at the time of making this video, there's just not. So I guess instead I could end it with this. You should not ever stop making the art or music or stories or videos or whatever it is you love to make because of this whole situation and these stupid AI companies that, let's be real, are probably just some kind of complicated VC money laundering scheme that we'll find out about five years from now because <laughs> one day you're gonna die. And oh, if well. this is what you gave up doing the things you love over, you're gonna look back on your life and die with a whole bunch of regret. And that would suck. So I guess maybe more simply, I'll just end all of this with my favorite quote of all time. You only get to die once. Hmm. So make sure it was worth it. Hey. I am literally committed to letting you know every single update that happens, every case that matters, so you know how to defend yourself. That is why I do this channel. So make sure you subscribe. I'll see you on the next one. I'm Top Music Attorney.